know, I've been in this industry over 35 years, and I think the first day I got here, people told me installation was the greatest problem in this industry. I don't know that it is, but it's up there in the top three anyway. I don't think anything has changed in those, in those years. The, uh, a difference to me, because I've, I've been doing it for a long time too, and you know, you can always say installation headaches are, are, are a problem, because it is. Everything we do is custom. Every bit of, every, yeah. every job we do has to be put together in the house. And I think people complained about uh, installers at a time before. The, the complaint I'm getting now is, at, at that time, if you treated the installers the best, and you, and you kept them busy and all that sort of thing, you had all that you could choose from though. You know, installation might have still been hard because that's a hard part of the business, but you still had a huge labor pool of people to pull from. Today, it, it is not that way. And hard surface uh, exploding the way it was, it is, you know, ceramic takes a, a, a higher skill level and it's a slower installation. You know, the average installation is two, three, four days for even the smallest job for the stages that it has to go through. I see. You know, if you're fighting over a carpet installer, most of those are one-day jobs. If you have a lot of ceramic, you have, a, have to have a lot more crews because of the stages that it takes uh -huh. to get all that to. So the hard surface switch really changed that. And vinyl installers are almost non-existent. Cheap vinyl installers. Yeah. No one's teaching them. Now, it seems to me too, j just as an observer, that there are installers in various parts of the country who have solved the problem for themselves, different ways. So some of them have installers on their payroll. That seems to be a popular way. Some of them, there's some sort of combination thereof. It seems like if as, you, as an independent retailer, you're waiting for the industry, the manufacturing community, or somebody to solve it, you know, you're going to be here 35 years from now waiting, you know, still. Um, is there a way you can solve that in your little p part of the world um, for you? Uh, well, I'm not waiting for any of the manufacturers to, to solve this for me. So, so tr trust me, that, that, sh that ship has sailed and I don't <laughs> think they're getting back on. Yeah. Uh, they, they've made it pretty clear. They, they don't want to have anything to do with that. end of that's, that's what that's you're what You're talking our, about the S600. Yeah. Installation standard. Yeah, yeah, and just in general, uh, you know, I, I've never seen the the manufacturers get that involved with training installers. You know, distributors were a big part of that, and that was one of the best things about dealing with large distributors. They had a lot of training classes. They brought that in. When the recession hit, a lot, a lot of that went away. I think the dealer's going to have to become more and more involved tr teaching installation. But there's that fine line now. You have all the IRS regulation, and you have to keep the employee versus the subcontractor is so separate, there's a lot of things they won't, they won't allow you to do. Does that make it look more attractive for you to bring installers on your payroll? Would that be something you would consider? That's a, that's a hard switch. That's, that's a hard switch with the, with the labor pool. With the company, with my, the roots of my company tried to transition twice into employee installers. And, uh, you know, never say never, but both of my personal experiences, it did not go very well. Our, our, uh, our production went way down with really? in-house installers. Now, I think if you start a guy from scratch and train him all the way through, that's probably the way to go if you can do that. I think taking someone who was a subcontractor and making them employ, it, it's hard to convert. Different that mindset. It is. It, it is. And you can't have both. You know, in most states, if you have any installers on your payroll, the IRS considers Everybody's all of your dollars an, an employee, so it's a, it, they kind of kill the transition for you. It there. seems like it's going down that road. I think there was just a situation at at Lowe's where there was a a major fine, and this isn't just floor coverings, but everything across the board. It almost seems like there's going to be more and more pressure on independent floor covering retailers to maybe make these people em employees, or I don't know, ch change the way their relationship with a, with a, a, a subcontractor. I don't know, those will be the only two alternatives, I guess. It, 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 it may have to happen. I can tell you, I'm, I'm not the man who has that answer today. That's... But I was, one of the things I was trying to get at too is recruiting. Obviously, that, that's a problem. We have a graying of the installation community 
and as you mentioned, a whole whole generation missing from the, the chain. Uh, having them on the payroll would be certainly a way that you could recruit, train, and offer a job. Um, that's a heck of a step, though. Would that be something you would even consider? Uh, it, it would. Uh, it would be very tough, and I would have to have a lot of legal counsel to to, to make that switch. It, it, it truthfully would, with uh, with the way uh, the IRS, workman's comp, and healthcare all ties into. I mean, you could you could double or triple your employee count in a day by by doing that. You know, and that that changes everything about the scope of your your company. So that that changes. You need more salespeople. You need more people out there beating the payment to get that kind of, if you had tile people on there. So that would, yeah, that's, that's quite an undertaking, isn't it? You would need, you would need more of, of everything, yes. So I can see that in this environment, that would be something that you wouldn't be all that anxious. <laughs> I, I, I would not be today. No, I would not be anxious to, to do that. Now, if I was starting a, uh, a company from scratch, very small and trying to build my way through the process. Uh, that's a model that I you could consider from from day one. Uh, it's it's hard to, to flip a, a larger company over over to that and, and handle everything that comes along but, with it. But 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 as we stand here, you have business new new business coming in. Your expectations probably are that you're going to have a nice rate rate of increase going forward. So you're under the gun. And I'm sure in recruiting subcontractors, it's probably not a case where quality is going to increase. It is a, um, we have service managers in each of our distribution centers, and that is part of their job is to look for, look for more crews and bring more, more stuff in. And they have got to articulate to those people the service levels that we expect and what has to happen. And uh, I tell you what, you, You'd be really surprised how receptive a lot of the crews are. You know, uh, since people quit training and people kept, quit talking to them, you know, five or six years ago, they haven't had people even having these conversations. Some of the guys are very receptive to that. You just, you got to make your place the best place for them, mm -hmm. for them to work, and help them and help train them as much as you can while staying within the parameters of subcontractors. I've got you. It's a balance. Uh, we were talking about growth go, going forward, and obviously that's, I'm sure, growth plans differ depending on where you're standing in, in your operation. You're in two states and a bunch of different, different cities. Your expectations in terms of product groups, you had mentioned hard surface is growing faster than, than soft surface and likely will continue to do so. Among the hard surface categories, do you feel like wood obviously is popular, but do you feel like perhaps ceramic is a more attractive field in terms of growth over the next five, six, eight years? Uh, everything has a cycle. You know, when you go back to the, the 50s and, and hardwood floors was were what went in FHA homes. Yeah. And then we covered it all up with carpet. You know, my only hope is that we're putting hardwood on and then we're going to cover it up with carbon and do something different again to, yeah. to change it. C ceramic continues to grow because of the design appeal of ceramic. You know, you do a, a master bath now and you can just do, just do spectacular things with the Lestelles and the glass tile and everything you can do. So the more, the more I see consumers using the Pinterest of the world, the HGTVs uh, of the world and seeing those things, ceramic I think will continue to grow because they like what they can do, you know, it's so custom. It, it, it's such a, it makes such a difference in the home. I see that continuing to grow. But does that mean if I come in here two years down the road, I'm going to see more ceramic on the floor here and more people that are expert in the ceramic field? Uh, I think you'll see more and more people that are ceramic. From the dealer side of it, carpeting is probably still by far the most profitable part of the business. It, it's, uh, it's quicker, it's easier, it's, you know, a lot of people will attempt to put down ceramic themselves, if it's a simple thing, people will attempt to put down laminate and luxury vinyl tile themselves. No one Big puts mistake. carpet down yeah. by themselves. Yeah. You know, no, no one does that. So that's still a professionally installed uh, part of the of, of the. I don't business. know anybody talented enough to put any of those down. Yeah. Uh, we we, we uh, cash and carry has gotten to be a bigger bigger part of our business. We 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 sell a lot of it just straight out the door.
I'm, I'm not telling you I'm thrilled with that because the boxes live and die by selling it out the door. You know, I don't think anyone designs a custom, that custom bathroom that I talked about, I don't think they go into a box to say, man, I want something beautiful and really custom. They go in there for the basic. They come to that specialty retailer for that. So I hope that continues I to grow. I got you. I got you. What, what, if you had a chance to say to the whole industry, you know, I wish you guys had considered this or maybe tweak this a little bit or change that, what would you say? I was going to say it to the manufacturing industry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my wish is that they would actually support the, the, the retailer that, that, that's out there. I think there needs to be a way to differentiate what they do. You know, most manufacturers, that they, as long as they're running the machine and it's cranking out, they're, they're pretty happy. And, you know, they tell us they hate the boxes. They probably tell the boxes they hate the retailers. You know, it's, it, it's, to, it's to keep the machines running. You know, a lot of them sell installers direct still. It's still a, a crazy business out there. I, I would love to see product diversification to where there were things that were only sold in, especially retailers. You know, Mannington's probably the only name I can think of that really still, that's the only place you're going to find them in a, in a specialty retail store. You don't see them in the box. But everything else you can see see everywhere. I wish there was a way to differentiate the two. I got gotcha. you. What, if I'm here a year from now, which I may well be. Would you be I don't welcome know. to come back? <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the invitation. It's been great be, being here. <laughs> What what things, other than what we've talked about, might you be considering in terms of expansion? You had mentioned perhaps into another another segment of retailing. Anything else? And one of the things I'm thinking about is in-home sales. That seems to be a popular consideration for some. Is that something that you do or you would consider doing? Uh, completely, I would consider doing. And, and I think that's the next wave, you know, to tie in that uh, consumer that wants to get on the on the web and pick out product or come up with ideas and have those bring it straight to their home I, I think that will be an evolution within all the cities that we already do business in now okay. we, 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 our store in Columbus uh, Indiana is a by appointment only and, and that type of business and we've been very successful with it there probably Louisville Lexington we will have that if you come back in a year I would be surprised if that's not a part of our business. And that will increase part. the pie. That will make the pie bigger. Right. right. Interesting. I think that's just a natural. As, as websites expand, as they can look at more product on the web, you know, we're still a, luckily we're still a, pro, still a product that they want to see and feel and touch. But if they could get on the web, do that, contact us and have us come to their home and take care of that, I, I, think, I think they would do that. And there's a whole strata of people that would, unlike, would be unlikely they would walk inside of any floor covering store because whatever the reason wanted to do that. Right. Very interesting. We've had a couple of large retailers come in and out of Louisville a couple of times that had big shop at home that worked in Chicago and larger cities. You know, I'm in small markets. I, I think it would be more successful for someone who's tied into the local community to, to provide that service. You already have the trust, so that would... Uh, well, we hope, yeah. Letting... Nick Fedrici and company come into their home, they would feel a, a whole lot make it more easier for them. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Nick, it's always great uh, talking with you. I appreciate your hospitality and having us here. You know, uh, you were here last year. I had a great time. You're back this year. We would love to have you back next year. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and the food is good besides that. <laughs> Th thanks again. Our pleasure. Th thanks again, Nick. All right. We've been talking with Nick Fedrici, the Flooring Gallery. We are in Louisville, Kentucky. This is Talk Floor TV.